Now today, I'm going to do a slightly different video than normal. I'm going to show you how to make a live trap because I'm staying at a friend's house and there's this mouse that keeps coming through the kitchen. An actual mouse, not my dog mouse. And um, I want to make a live trap to catch the mouse and release it in the wild rather than killing the mouse. I figured it'd be a good excuse for a video, wouldn't it? So here's what I'm going to use. First, I need a bottle. I like this Gatorade bottle because they're a bit, the plastic's a bit firmer, and as you'll see later on, a stronger plastic's better than a softer plastic. Um, so I have the bottle. I have two rubber bands. I also have... No, I don't. I also have a piece of string, which you'll see what that's for and a thumbtack, and if the thumbtack's not sufficient enough, I also have a paper clip that I can use. You'll see how this all comes together in a little while. And of course, then you use whatever bait you decide to use. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my knife. Oh yeah, you also need a knife. And I'm going to remove the plastic label on this bottle just so that you can see the inside a little better and check from a distance and see what you've got inside. So let me, now what I'm going to do is, oh yeah, I'm sorry, you also need two colored pencils or splints or sticks of some sort. I'm using colored pencils in this case. And I'm going to place them. The door is going to be right around here, okay? So I'm gonna place one of the splints through this half of the bottle in the containment type area, and another one through this half in the door half. And uh, I like to cut my the holes for the splints before I actually cut the door because the plastic's stronger and it's just a lot easier that way. So let me do that. Now please, always be careful not to cut yourself, not to cut towards yourself or anything like that. Always follow proper knife safety when you're doing these things. I have a really sharp knife, so I have to be really careful that it doesn't slip through and slice my hand open or create too large of an incision in the plastic and ruin the whole purpose of the trap. My second hole, or a second pair of holes is going to go in the door section. I'll put them a little higher than the first pair of holes just because experience has shown me that it works a little bit better when I do it that way. It's okay if things are a little bit crooked. This isn't a craft show. It's a live trap. Now this Gatorade plastic is a lot tougher, which is a good thing. So you got to really push that stuff through. Okay, there's my first pencil. And my second one goes up here. The purpose of the pencils is part of the spring. That's what you connect the elastic bands to that, in return, keep the door open and closed. My second hole is a little tight. It's a little small. There you go. Okay, perfect. A little crooked, <laughs> but pretty good. So now I'm going to cut the door. And I'm going to come around here between the pencils, right? And I'm not going to cut the entire circumference of the plastic. Um, I want enough plastic here to act as reinforcement to keep the bottom from collapsing when it's in the open position because the rubber bands will pull, try to pull it closed. And again, that's my hinge, right? So if it's too flimsy or too narrow, it can open and close a little easier and this is not as good. So let me do that. You can always make it smaller. Once you cut too much, you know, there's nothing you can really do about that. So it's better less. Okay. I'm going careful. This is a sharp knife, so it's real easy to slip and cut too much. Or, you know, cut in the wrong direction or something. I always keep my knives really sharp. A sharper knife is a safer knife. And it does its job better, right? Okay, now that's about the right size. I'm gonna cut a little bit more. There you go. There you go, there's the hinge, okay? Now the other plastic, I also used a one liter Pepsi bottle, but the plastic's too soft, so when it's open, it kind of collapses and stuff like this, and it's no good. This Gatorade plastic's really strong. That's gonna work to my advantage later on. So now, I'm going to take my thumbtack and create a hole 
as far back as I can get because I want the mouse to be way back there when it triggers it so it has a long distance to try to turn around and get out the door before it closes. Animals can be really fast. So I'm going to make the hole nice and loose so that this, this tack slides very easily and freely. Um, that creates a faster trigger. Okay, now it seems nice and loose. Okay. So now I'm going to take my string, which I already tied a, a knot in, because I put one end of the string where the cap goes. And then I just screw the cap back on. So make sure your string is short enough to keep the trap in the open position when the trigger's ready. Okay? So that's about where I want it. So I'm going to screw my cap on in this position I want it in, nice and carefully so I don't wrap the string all the way around into the wrong position. There, that's in a good spot. Now, I open it up and I take my thumbtack and try to fit my big hands in there. Now, it's quite sensitive. I'm going to have to adjust it to make it, you know, to the desired sensitivity that I want. But the mouse goes in here. You can't really see the thumbtack. See that? I'll place some bait on the thumbtack. Some peanut butter. Because they everything loves peanut butter, right? And you just touch that every so slightly. The door slams shut. Except there's no knife in there. And the mouse is trapped within. So, uh... I'll come back with the mouse eventually. So hang in there. Okay, there's the bottle in its ready position. Attempt number one. Fingers crossed. So I set the trap in a place where I thought it would be good, which is behind the dog food. I originally put it under the sink, but I didn't feel like that was a good spot because um, there's other traps there that haven't caught anything. That's where they've been putting some traps and stuff. And um, I really think that behind the dog food is a good place to put it. And so that's where I put it last night. So check it out. It worked. It's a deer mouse. Okay, it's a member of the white-footed mouse family. Um, I don't know if you can tell. But they've got white feet, sort of. White legs. White underbellies. The deer mouse has a buff upper surface <laughs> um, kind of like a deer white-tailed deer they've got very long tails see that tail all the way to there now it's a cute mouse I think uh, this one has a torn ear that's healed over so it either got in a scuffle or a fight or you know got it caught on something or maybe even a predator nearly caught it and it's healed so this is an adult male, I think. Can't really tell. But uh, there you have it. This trap works. So give it a try, guys. It's fun to make. And uh, it's just a fun thing to do. And you don't hurt the mouse in the process. So you can do that whole humane thing if you wish to. So, uh, which obviously is the kind of thing I like to do. Do what you gotta do. So, I'm back from work. And, uh, because, you know, I was leaving from work, or for work, like, ten minutes after I showed you the mouse I caught. And I wanted to show everybody here, like, look, I got the mouse. And, uh, plus, I didn't have time to release it. I can't just go out in the yard and release it. It winds up back in the house. So, I put it in this, right? Um, I just get back from work. I should have known better. I should have known better. Just ignore it. Signing out.